Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Impotent Idols. Beloved family, our text says, The idols of the nations are silver and gold, made by human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, nor is there breath in their mouth. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. Psalms 135, 15 to 18. We have become so used to using the word idol that we even have a show called American Idols, where we vote for our favorite idol. And we frequently use it to describe our favorite athlete, singer, actor, or celebrity. We make it very personal and say, he or she is my idol. We may have posters on our walls, bobbleheads or busts on our tables, or even full-size statues erected. And even though we may not realize it, we can easily begin to worship idols, maybe not in the sense of praying to them, but looking up and admiring them. God doesn't particularly like the word idol. In fact, he commands us not to have any idols before him. None. You shall not make idols for yourselves or erect an image or pillar, or you shall not set up a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 26, 1. So I wanted to see what the word idol meant in the common biblical language of the day. And interestingly enough, the word idol derives its meaning from the Latin word for image, and the Greek word for likeness, image and likeness. Wait, that sounds familiar. I remember those words in Genesis. God says, let us create man in our image and likeness. So when we idolize something or someone, we are showing reverence, admiration, and even worship to an image or likeness. So it's easy to see why God, our creator Elohim says, you shall make for yourselves no idols, neither shall you raise up an engraved image or pillar, for I am Yahweh your God. In the ancient Roman or other civilizations, like the Egyptians, they would raise up statues, images, stone buildings, and require the people to worship these images and likeness of pharaohs, kings, and rulers. Even today, we still erect images of people that we admire, reverence, and some that people worship. In churches all over the world, there are images of saints, virgins, and religious leaders. In almost every government building around the world, they place a picture of the president, governor, mayor, prime minister, king, or ruler of that country, and may even have a statue of them. And this practice has made its way to one of the things that man made with his hands and inscribed an image on it. It is something that some people idolize, kill, steal, and destroy for. Something that women and men sell their bodies for. Something that causes all types of sin, lying, stealing, cheating, sexual sins, and even murder. And it is still one of the leading causes of divorce. Can you guess what it is? It is the one thing that Jesus Christ said, you cannot serve the way you serve him. You cannot worship or idolize it. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other or will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Money can be an idol. It used to be one for me. All I wanted to do was make money and play golf. I wanted to make as much money as I can and spend on the dream. Which dream is that? You know, the one the world system has programmed all us to have. Big houses, big cars, big bank accounts, live in luxury, best schools for our kids, live in the best neighborhoods and have the best life. It's a materialistic mindset created on me. And I admit it, I loved money. 
Most of us won't admit that, but we love what having money meant. Security, status, protection, and access. And then there is power and influence. People with money seemingly have all the power and none of the struggles and stress that poor people have, or so it seems. That's until life hits. And we realize that the very thing we serve, love, and even worship can't feel our pain, can't see our falls, and it can't hear our cries. David said that what we make with our hands and worship is really dead. Here, David, you are so right. We honor and ascribe value to dead presidents. We carry them around with us wherever we go and rely on them to feed us, clothe us, and shelter us. Help me, Father, deliver this seed this morning. But it can't help us with everything in our lives. Yes, Solomon said sarcastically in Ecclesiastes 10, 19, money is the answer for everything. Everything in the world system, but not in the kingdom of God. Jesus made fun of money and how insignificant it is when the leaders and rulers of the world system wanted to fund their religious system through the common practice of the temple taxation. They required Jesus and his disciples to pay the temple tax when they arrived in Capernaum. They asked Peter, doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Peter said, yes, he does. When Jesus heard them speaking, he says, Simon, go down to the river, take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a piece of money. Take it and pay the temple tax for me and for you. Matthew 17, 24 to 27. Jesus is saying, that which you value and worship, the fish and the animals eat, destroy, and show no value to. What we worship, they reject. The wise teacher in Ecclesiastes 7, 12 says, Wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. So who has the most wisdom here? Men who worship idols, what they create with their hands, are a fish that eat the created thing. The translation of Psalm 135, our text this morning, put another way says, that possessions will never satisfy. Their lifeless and futile works cannot bring life to them. Their things can't talk to them or answer their prayers. Blind men can only create blind things. Those deaf to God can only make a deaf image. Dead men can only create dead idols. And everyone who trusts in these powerless dead things will be just like what they worship, powerless and dead. Family, idols are helpless, lacking in power and strength. They are created things that cannot speak, hear, or feel. King Jesus says, don't worship them, nor any human, dead or alive, even if they are imprinted on dollar bills. No image of eagles, cows, dragons, bears, lions, or so-called stars and celebrities. All created things. King Jesus said, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Much love.